Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. In this video, if I can get it to focus. It's a bit better, isn't it? In this video, I want to talk about um, dying to self, denying self, what it means to die and for your life to be hidden in Christ. What that means is that the old man that you once were is no longer. He's dead. The man you see here before you is a different man. I'm born again, spiritually born again in Christ Jesus. Crucified the flesh. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't have sex, I don't masturbate. I don't do drugs. I, I don't live in the world anymore. I don't believe in its principles. I don't endeavour to be accepted for what the world deems acceptable. I don't endeavour to be in the world anymore, though I have to live. Because suicide isn't accepted. So while I'm here, I serve Jesus Christ. I don't have any interests in the world apart from the people that I love. And that's everybody. So my interest in the world is only the people that pass me every day. And because I'm a preacher of the gospel, Satan attacks me through those people. The Bible says that the devil is the spirit operating in the children of disobedience yeah children of disobedience are all around me every day there are people who are, are both conformed to the world perhaps in ignorance and those who have already gone away to serve the devil they've already made up their mind Jesus said they went out from among us so it could be seen that they were not from us and that's not just a few that's most people the ones who are saved are few Jesus said Many are called, but few are chosen. And I believe that I've been chosen. That's why I suffer so much. I suffer spiritually. I come under spiritual attack. And it's little things. The devil's subtle. He knows how to pull, to pull on you, you know. He knows how to do really ugly things. Really ugly things. And I'll give you an idea. Like, you'll put a tip in, so you've ordered your coffee and it's small things that he does <clears throat> or his demon one or the other because people just don't do these types of things people just don't do what I'm about to tell you happened they don't it's not in them to do it they just don't do it so I put the tip in I always do it when I'm having a coffee I just put the tip in because I, I appreciate that they work hard there I put it in before I paid for the coffee because the woman was away doing the coffee. So she came back. She said, that'd be 310. Now this is not because I have a grudge on the woman. I want you to see how the devil works. I want to expose him. So she did this when I was counting the money. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. That's not a thing. Do you understand? Nobody does it. They just don't do that. You don't do that. That's ugly. That's disgusting. Somebody's counting the change in their hand and they do that. That's not a thing. Nobody does that. That's the devil. That's what he's like. Because what he does is he sends his demon to sit on the contrary and to make you feel uh, stagnated. It's to take the momentum out of you. Like when you take the momentum out of a pool, it stagnates. It's sort of sits there's no flow or movement in it anymore it's like the the 
Deadpool. So what the devil does is he tries to remove all momentum, <clears throat> take the wind out of your sails, so you're just dead in the water. So what's sort of the opposite of putting a tip in the jar? That, isn't it? That's what one would do to fight against a tip. To take the momentum out of the goodness of giving a tip. And it's not so that I can say it on video here now that I gave somebody a tip. And Jesus said, he said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing when you do something for somebody else. So this is just for the, the point of exposing the devil. That's the opposite of giving a tip. The one who was just tipped doing that for the money. You see how they work now? You see how twisted they are? And that's what a demon is. That's what a vampire is. A vampire is trying to create a sense of deficit because they're trying to siphon your energy. Trying to drag down on you. They're trying to give you psychologically the impression because the actual effect of giving the tip hasn't been diminished by this at all. The woman still counts the tips at the end of the day, and it's still a nice thing to do for somebody. Her doing this changes nothing, and I don't actually believe it was the woman doing it. I believe it was a demon entered into her. I do believe that. Because nobody does that. Nobody does that. Like I'm not I'm not I wasn't there counting for a long time or something. I was just literally just getting the coins out of my hand. And this. Nobody does that. I, I think that's actually the first time that's ever happened to me in my whole life. And I'm 40. Nobody does that. Unless it's a child and they, you know, they're waiting for their lollipop, you know, or their sweeties. Nobody does that. So that's a demon. And people who've gone away to serve Satan or have joined a witchcraft coven or cabal give their bodies over to the demons to operate in them whenever the battle requires it and I am the battle because I'm a preacher of God so the purpose of this is to show you how demons operate it's all perception because again the tip or the giving of the tip hasn't been negatively affected by this. But the idea is that the woman who the tip was given to doesn't appreciate it such that now she's demanding payment for the coffee in a very subtle way. And these little psychological mechanisms are the stuff of devils. Because what they're trying to do is not diminish the effect of giving a tip. It's just good practice. It's the, it's the perception. It's how I'm viewing what's happening that the demon is relying upon. He's trying to influence my perception of the events. Because if he thinks, the demon or Satan, thinks that I'm getting any momentum or reassurance out of doing kind things for somebody else, he wants to reduce that because they're trying to cause that stagnation. <clears throat> do you see how they operate now? So basically what they're trying to do is remove all joy from your life. All sense of forward momentum, all sense of progress, all sense of your being able to positively influence your environment. 
But remember, it's only a sense. That's how you conquer this. They're only playing picture games. They're just putting frames up in front of you, hoping that these frames will affect how you perceive your environment. But the question would be, are you only doing these things for how they make you feel? Is this all self-centered stuff? Is this self-centered giving? Because Satan is always trying to influence the thinking, not only of the preacher, but those perceiving how the preacher is being treated. Because they try within their circles to justify treating somebody badly. Tough love or... It's like we're trying to teach this one a, a, a lesson. No, what they're trying to do is make people so punch drunk and so desperate that they'll just accept it's all right, it's all good, do whatever you want, it's all good. When actually what they're saying is just I'll agree to anything so I get a bit of peace. Which is what? A submission tactic. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this present age, and spiritual wickedness in the heavenly realms. So it is a wrestling match. So what do you do when you're trying to wrestle somebody? You are basically trying to, any time they put something down to get strength, to get foundation, to f have a sense of stability, that limb is taken out from under them. Or if a leg goes up, that leg becomes the target. If a hand goes up, if a shoulder goes up, that's what becomes the target because it is the thing that's gaining momentum and delivering power and stability to the body. Because you can have power in your body, but if you don't have the ability to place that uh, power in an extremity such that you can stand, it's no good to you. So wrestling is taking the ground from under you. It's taking your momentum from under you. It's giving you the sense that you don't have any platform upon which to stand. But our platform is not in this world and it's not dependent upon circumstance. So they have nothing against us. They don't have the within their arsenal the weapons to undo us because they're all dependent upon perception and stimulus. We don't look to this world for, for our grounding. The rock of our salvation is Jesus. He is our foundation. So whatever they throw at us, it matters not because we don't look to this world for stability. So that's what it means by dying to self. When you die to self, you don't have any selfish ambition and you don't place your worth in how others treat you. So it matters not. Not that it doesn't matter to them or to their judgment how they treat you. It will. God will judge them. But it doesn't matter to your sense of value because it doesn't come from the reactions or the responses of the people around you or they're attributing a value to you because if you if you start to rely on the currencies which are within Satan to affect within his remit to affect within his power to affect now you're relying upon something Satan can move left or right So what did Paul say? He said, whether in little or in much, I have learned therewith to be content. For example, I went busking today, I made 3 50. Three euros 50. Some days I go out there and I'll spend 
four hours and get 10 euros. Four hours. When I was a professional, semi-professional musician, I used to get 200 to 250 euros for an hour and a half. Now, it's not reasonable to expect that amount of money busking, but to go from that to four hours of music for 10 euros while you're under spiritual attack at the same time, it's a bit of a difference, isn't it? So I could busk for, in three days, I could end up busking 16 hours. A normal musician wouldn't play that much in a week. 12 hours, maybe maybe 15 hours. I could do 15 hours in three days of busking and your average musician wouldn't play that much. Professional musician wouldn't play that much music in an entire week. They might do four gigs a week, maybe five, two hour slots, it's 10 hours, and they'd be coming away with at least a thousand euros. At least, some of them are getting a thousand a night. And I sit out there as an ex-semi-professional musician and I get 10 euros, 20, maybe sometimes if I'm very blessed, I'll get 40 euros. On the very, very extremely rare occasion, maybe once a year or once every five years, somebody might put 50 euros into a basket or something. But in the majority of cases, it's 40 euros of a good day. And most of the days it's between 10 and 20. Usually south of 20 euros. Has been my experience. So it's not for laziness that Christians can't uh, live with, you know, like I don't have my own house. I rent a room. I'm not even, I'm not even technically a leaseholder. I'm a licensee. I don't even have a lease on a room. The government don't give me any money, any contribution towards my rent, even though it is my right even after I filled out their paperwork and jumped through their hoops. So that's just the treatment that a Christian gets. So don't, don't think that Christians, because we work harder, are, are, are receiving more. We're not. If anything, our effort is shunned because the devil doesn't want it to be momentum to us. So whenever we go out and we're working hard, yes, we do make progress, but it's only progress in ways that Satan can't hinder. He will hinder us in any manner he can. And if you think that Satan isn't involved in only 350 getting into your cup when you're busking, you're not you're not understanding how this thing works. When I walk down the road and I see another guy's case full of money. Like and I mean full of money. Like notes and coins. A suit a guitar case full of money. If you don't think that that's spiritual, you're not you're not clued in. There's a reason the devil is called the god of the world. So as Christians, we don't rely on that. You don't you learn not to go out to play music for the money. You go out to play the music for the music. 
for the contribution to the society, to the, the, and you don't even go out anymore for it to be received well, because Satan can influence the expressions of the people going by, such that the only expressions you'll see are And spiritually, in the battle, they call that starving the preacher. What do you mean starving him? Starving him of anything that looks like joy in his environment. See how it works? So anything that looks like joy is like a child, you know, uh, enjoying the music or dancing to the music or looking with interest and with delight and with joy at the sound of the music and the man playing the drum, you know. That, that's, you know, obviously encouraging. So anything that's encouraging will be removed when you're under spiritual attack. And then when they're really trying to hinder you, everybody in your environment will be um, sad-faced, the devil will try to interfere with the actual physical functioning of your voice. I've had him cause voice cracks and pitch bends in my voice. I've had him jerk my body while I'm sitting on the drum. Um, just have people stand there and pull faces. when I'm playing the music, all manner of different stuff just to make sitting there on your drum playing your few songs difficult and certainly not joyous. Why? Because joy is opposed to Satan. The joy of a Christian is an attack. It's a bombardment of Satan's evil remit. So he sends his agents into the environment to try to remove the stimulus for the acceleration or the encouragement of joy. And that's spiritual warfare. And when they get really desperate, like I injured my voice a while back, so I had like a, an injury to my neck. Demons will try to jerk my neck while I'm singing. So the demon will actually jerk my neck like that and I've had to learn so people don't think I'm having a seizure or something to sort of work that jerking into my the head bob that I do when I'm playing the music so I'm just playing music on the street and demons are literally jerking my body while I'm trying to play music. That's how desperate they are to remove the joy and the momentum out of the out of the playing. But that's what they are. They're parasitic vampires. And they can't have remit in an environment where joy and light is prospering. So what are they terrified of? They're terrified of a preacher of God who's joyous and loving on the people around them. They're terrified of that. Why? Because it reduces their remit and their influence in that area. Jesus said, overcome evil with good. So when you're out busking seven days a week and you're under attack every time you go out, what they're trying to do is stop you going out. They're trying to crush you as a person. Just smash you like 
take everything that gives you any sense of purpose in the in this earth in this life away from you everything even the preaching because they that's when they attack you most so they just try to crush us but they don't Jesus well they do but they don't destroy us by it Jesus said crushed but not destroyed Like I don't have access to my daughter. I the night after uh, her honey or her uh, hen night, my fiance left with the child. Um, gigs I had were taken away, so I had to sell everything I had. Um, the house that I had with my little girl, I was kicked out of because they were selling it and was un was unable to find a house for us ever since. That was when she was four, now she's ten. Um, nobody will hire me as a chef, which is my qualification. Um, the government don't treat me fairly. I get social welfare, which I'm grateful for, but I don't get rent assistance, which is my right. I'm on the housing list. Um, so it's just, you know, I paint pictures, but I don't get any interest in them um, for the purposes of purchase or anything of that nature. Um, you know, I try to do my best in music and increase the the interests and the instruments and all that kind of stuff but it doesn't get really that well received when I go out busking and stuff now having said that you do get timed pockets of encouragement like you do get pockets of respite where you know a demon isn't hanging out of your neck but uh, most of the time they are hanging out of my neck so I'm not I'm not even able to sing 200% of my ability because of a demonic interference in my physical body. Even though I'm a preacher of Christ, the thorn in my flesh from Satan has been allowed to hinder my singing. By God. God has allowed it. It's not that this is a, a super strong or specific, particularly special demon. It's just that God has allowed it. For whatever reason he has, he has. So, these are often called thorns in the flesh, messengers of the devil. But there's a fight, and, and the devil's opportunistic, you know. If he can torment you in a way that isn't perceived by others, he'll take the, the shot. Because then he doesn't have to try and justify his actions. Because he can hide how he's hindering your life. The devil's a pig, a hiding, cowering pig. And he runs from anything that looks like love. He's a defeated snake in the grass. So do we let that stop us? Nope. Every day, or most days, I still go out on the street busking. No matter how difficult they make it, I still try to sing my songs. And play the music for the people. Because that's my contribution to society. It's the only one available to me. apart from the preaching of the gospel. But Jesus said, neglect not your gifts, work with your hands, and that's what I do. Okay, I don't work with my hands and make large amounts of money that I can give money to people, but there are other ways of giving, one of which is music. Music is a gift to us all. 
So demons are so full of hate that they would take music not only from me but the people around me listening to it and the joy of it. That's what Satan is. A parasite. A parasite king. He's head parasite. That's all he is. Nothing good in him. So what he does is he tries to restrain and constrain provision, neglecting to implement basic infrastructure so that people give way to him for the easing of the restrictions. When if they had their heads on, they could remove all of his influence from government by having them properly implement the constitution or be sacked. Because he uses men in government to cause those constrictions and constraints. You see? So that's what he is. That's how petty and pathetic he is. That he would even try to interfere with a man playing a few songs on the side of the street and interfere with how generous people are towards him. You see now? They are spirit operating in the children of disobedience. Blessings in Jesus' name. Don't be a child of disobedience, but come to the Lord Jesus in faith. Blessings. Holy kiss.